Welcome to Revive and Thriveology. In this episode, I interview Megan Masterson. She's a a sustainability enthusiast and a composting queen, and she's going to give us so much information. I know you'll love it. Keep watching. Welcome to Revive and Thriveology. I help women transform their lives by harmonizing their living space through holistic home practices. I'm your host, Lisa Morton. Welcome, welcome to Revive and Thriveology. I'm your host, Lisa Morton. In today's episode, I have Megan Masterson joining me. Megan is a sustainability enthusiast and my personal friend, and I'm so excited to have you, Megan. Thanks for jumping on with me today. Thank you for having me. I am so excited. Well, let's talk about sustainability. So share with everyone how you got into living a sustainable lifestyle. Yeah, so uh, a little background about me. I currently live in Fort Wayne, um, Indiana, which is where I'm assuming you know that Lisa lives there too. Um, (laughs) But I moved here from New York City. And um, New York City was kind of the opposite lifestyle for me of sustainability. It was very much fashion and making sure to have the latest and greatest of everything. Um, So when I moved to Indiana, it became more of a reflection on my inner self of less about trying to understand material goods or material things. And um, I watched this documentary on Netflix called Minimalism. And for me, it really struck to this point that less is more. And there's all of these concepts about minimalism. Um, But for me, it started my journey into sustainability. And it really helped me start to connect more with the things that were important to me in my life, um, be it like personal things or the earth, um, which is something that is at the center of sustainability. So for me, it started with the concept of being more or less as minimal as I can be and uh, spiraled dramatically and enormously into in uh including it into all of the facets of my life so um yeah i don't know everything from food to what i purchase it all kind of goes through this little filter in my brain now of is this sustainable or not i love that yeah i love that little filter <laughs> I love that's the brilliant little filter and i hate the little filter <laughs> right i bet i bet yeah i, bet. I love that you know it's minimalism because minimalism can be a lot to different people yeah um you know you can you can kind of go one end of the spectrum or the others my whole thing is i'm trying to always tell people don't just fill your home with stuff right Right. make sure everything means something it has some sort Mm -hmm. of good connection if it doesn't lift your energy when you walk in the room it doesn't belong in your space it doesn't belong to be around you your children you know it's it's important to to be very mindful of those things around us. So your minimalism can be, you know, like that, like you're just really selective or you can be like my friend Megan here who is <laughs> super selective, but you can like you live this really cool lifestyle. You're also vegan, you're a mm-hmm. nature lover, you go backpacking through the woods for days on end with your hubby. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, think- well real quick. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that the backpacking also has a big part of the of that minimalist thing, too, because you can only carry, you know, you don't want to carry 80 pounds on your back. <laughs> I don't want to carry 80 <laughs> pounds on my back, rather. Yeah, so it's funny that you mentioned that because I'm like, oh, yeah, you have to carry what you need. Yeah. <laughs> well, so interesting. Um, Megan actually has a baby, recently had a baby. Yeah. So I'd love to know how your approach to middle minimalism might have changed a little bit. It has and it hasn't. Um, so I have received, so back to the sustainability like thread as well, I have received pretty much all of the things that we have for, my baby's name is Reed. Um, so I'm going to say that. So Reed is my baby. Uh, and most of the things that we've gotten for Reed have been secondhand. And one of the things that I really love about that is he is constantly growing. Like he literally is, he turned seven months today, seven months old. Yay. And I know it's insane. <laughs> That's um, so fast. But he only stays in clothes for like the shortest little blimp of time. 
And so for me, um, you know, I, we have purchased maybe five things for him, um, clothing wise awesome. and uh-huh. everything else is just secondhand. And it's, it's just really cool to see that, you know, we cycle through a bunch of stuff and then, and then it's done. Um, one thing I will also say about sustainability and minimalism is that we have chosen to use cloth diapers and I know that that's not for everybody. And there's a lot of like, I don't know, people that are intimidated about it. It can seem kind of scary and kind of gross, um, at the same (laughs) time to some people, you know, but, uh, for us, we had decided to purchase only 21 diapers. So Reed has 21 diapers and um, we do our diaper laundry every other day. And uh, for us, one of the things that was important and a key point of being sustainable is if something is convenient, it probably isn't sustainable. So if you just let that sit for a second. So having 21 diapers is really inconvenient sometimes. Like if we're traveling, 21 diapers, it won't get you very far because you have to wash them before you get to the 21st diaper or else you gotta make a baby. So um, <laughs> uh, so for us, the uh, this whole concept of really leaning into being uncomfortable and being okay with having to plan out you know, what you're going to do for washing diapers or how many things you're going to have available. It -hmm. can be scary and intimidating, but at the end of the day, it's so much more sustainable and so much less of a footprint than the convenience of having something like a disposable diaper or, um, you know, transitioning maybe to not baby stuff for our our non-baby friends too, is like a, like a coffee cup, um, Mm -hmm you know, having that, just that mindset of having a to-go coffee cup on in your car or something on hand, while not the most convenient thing, um, it, it really adds up to have less coffee cups out in the landfill uh, mm-hmm. from a sustainability perspective. I love that. I mean, you know, where intention goes, energy flows, right? So, yes. so true. Yeah, it might be inconvenient. You know, I have my my coffee mug and I have to go wash it out and everything yeah but who cares if I can help the planet a little bit I'd rather do that right yeah so yeah let's move a little deeper if someone is listening and like hey this sounds cool but I don't know where to start yeah what are some tips some easy to implement tips or steps to take I always tell people to start with food. So food is the number one thing that you probably think about in a day, whether you realize it or not. Um, It's something that we all need, well, food and water. Um, It's something that we need as humans. And so if you can take this tiny, tiny baby step and just start to think about your food, you think about what you're gonna eat throughout the week, meal prepping, um, even just thinking about the, the waste from your food, um, that's honestly the best place I tell people to start because if you can become more mindful, more minimal, more slow with what you're getting from a food perspective, more intentional, I love that you said that word because it's all about that connection to your internal energy as well. And if you can get to that point where you're thinking more about the food that you're putting in like whatever it is, and the waste that then is caused from the food, you'll start to notice this little snowball effect where you'll be out and you'll, you know, you'll be shopping or something and something will catch your eye. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, wait, how many wares would I get out of that? Um, And it just like, it's this little simple mindset change that happens. But if you just start with your food, um, that's, that's the most basic way. If you're new to sustainability, uh, start there. I love that. That's a good place. That's a good one. So while we're on this topic, Megan actually started a an amazing composting business. So I know we weren't going to get into this very much, but I want to touch on it because composting for me, I had thought about it 
We'd actually talked about it several times about buying the big barrel that you put in your backyard. And then we froze because we were like, what if I don't do it right? What if I don't turn it right? What if it's smelly and gross? What do I do with the mess when I mess it up, right? (laughs) So we started composting. Megan's business is called Ground Down. And um, I love the approach. It's very easy. I did not realize how easy composting would be until we dove in and did it with you. And I'm sure, I think every city has composting available now. You just have to, yeah, like kind of Google, you know, and find somewhere to compost. And I mean, you've made it so easy. And I love that I have less waste. It's amazing how much food waste you have when, because so here's the experiment. We were going out of town and I wasn't going to be around for my pickup and everything. I'm like, okay, we'll just, we have like three days of food. We'll just, you know, scraps. We'll just toss that, you know, instead of composting like we normally do. It was mind blowing how much food scraps we had yeah. and how much you can save from the landfill just by taking, being mindful, taking a couple extra steps. I snagged those compostable bags, right? Mm-hmm. And then I put my scraps in and I toss them in the freezer. And you don't smell anything. It's it's great. And then, you know, um, you know, when I know when the pickup's going to be coming that day, I'll pull the stuff out of the freezer and put it out in the on the front step, and it gets picked up, and my new bin gets returned. And I'm sure every city and every company can might have a little different process, but yeah. it's super easy, and it's also been really helpful because if you follow me on social media uh, or get my newsletter, you've learned about my flower challenge for the year where I was encouraging you everyone to gift their home with some sort of nature every week so as you can imagine i've had a fair amount of flowers you know that are done at you know at the end of a a week or two (laughs) so at least you know now i can compost them instead of having you know to throw them in the garbage or typically i try to take them out to the woods and just dispose them back in nature but i love the idea of putting my spent flowers that i enjoyed so much along with the food scraps and knowing it's all going to be turned back into this beautiful black soil again yes so all of that (laughs) talk a little bit about compost and how you got into that all right so composting for me started um with more background is that i teach yoga as well um And one of the cues that I just happen to say in yoga a lot is ground down all four corners of your feet. And so if you're not doing that right now, just do it because it'll feel really good. Um, But unless you're driving, you know, and then don't do that. (laughs) Or running or walking. (laughs) Or running, you know, whatever. (laughs) They can do it Um, when they get home. (laughs) When you get home, take a moment, ground down. And, uh, and for me, it was this whole concept on connecting down with the ground, with the earth. And um, there's a whole slew of just literature out there on grounding techniques and just connecting your energy back with the earth. Uh, but for me, one of the things that I realized is we all have food waste. I have food waste um, that I can manage on my own, but a lot of people don't have space or desire or they're nervous about messing it up um, for doing their own composting. And one of the beautiful things is the opposite side of minimalism with this. The more people uh, that put their waste together means the less amount of waste is going to the landfill and we're creating more healthy soil. So it's this whole concept of aggregating more waste in order to make more soil, which then has a better impact on the landfill. So for me, um, my connection with yoga kind of started this spark for my connection with the earth, which um, I'm also a Virgo, so I just super earth loving everything. Um, But that started my love then for, for composting, which also is a huge sustainable start. So like Lisa said, If you are nervous about starting your own composting, I'm sure your city has a composting program, Mm -hmm. Um, but but give them a check out for sure. I love that. So tell me how kind of like this has changed. I mean, okay, I'll say you've changed my life just by (laughs) picking up my compost, right? And like starting this new routine and making me feel like I'm connecting to the earth and I'm doing something good. You know, might just be simply putting my bucket out 
once, you know, every so often you have it picked up. But, you know, that's a good thing. How has it kind of morphed your life in, you know, connecting to the earth, nature, and also the community and, you know, the people you work with and serve? It has definitely changed my life in a way that I never really anticipated having this space for emotionally. Um, And a lot of that is more of the patience to slow down and think before I do something, um, purchase something, or even, you know, act on anything. Because for me, it's allowed me to see the composting and just sustainability in general for me has allowed me to see that just by pausing for a second, I can actually see. I can see what's going on around me. I can see the waste. I can see the space that I have, the freedom, the breath, and be able to act on that a little bit better. Um, It's allowed me to try some like new, crazy, sustainable stuff. Um, One year for Earth Day, we decided, I decided, and my husband was really kind and um, went along with it with me, Um, but we decided to use reusable toilet paper (laughs) <laughs> wow, which is, Megan. Which is like weird to think about, but um, it, it didn't I can't last, even comprehend what that is. I know, I know. It didn't last, to be honest, because it was a lot of work and really inconvenient. Um, but we have since reused our reusable toilet paper into being reusable wipes for our baby. So in addition to the diapers, um, we have this like spray that you spray on the wipe and then you wipe his bottom um and they get washed with their cloth diapers it's but it's yeah and it's cheap like the thing is like when you have these sustainable practices not only does it end up being better for the environment it ends up being Mm -hmm. better for your wallet which Mm -hmm. is really just a cool life hack I feel like um Mm -hmm. but yeah so I think it's changed my life in this way of me not being scared of trying just like crazy stuff um, that is more sustainable just to see if it'll stick, if it'll work. Um, because for me, it's not about being perfect because mm-hmm. it, being perfect is just this yucky thing in my, in my mind. It's just, it's highly unattainable, um, to be perfect at something in my opinion. Um, but to do a good job at something and be okay with getting a little bit messy, like that's what sustainability is about. Um, And so for me, it's just given me that space to, to be open to trying something new. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. So it doesn't have to be all or none too. You know, you can implement one or two things. Like we started composting and then we started noticing, you know, we have these two English mastiffs that are drool monsters after they drink. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we used pa- a roll of paper towels, we'd go through a roll of paper towels every single day. So what yeah. we did years ago, we pulled, I pulled some old um, dish towels that I was done with mm-hmm. and hand towels that aren't so nice anymore, you know, and, and they get donated to the dogs. So they would get their mouths wiped and they get washed and start over, you know, or just refresh, wash them. And there you go again. And it's not using all these paper towels. Um Another fun thing I started doing, you, Megan, you've been such a good influence. Another fun thing I started doing was <laughs> cloth napkins because I have some beautiful nice. cloth napkins yes. that I save for the holidays. And I'm like, why am I saving these? We should be using these all the time because they're beautiful. Like I'm just this big mm-hmm. believer in, you know, even if my husband's traveling and I'm home alone, I still like get the placement out, get the cloth napkins, set my silverware out and make like, because I think that's important. You know, so Mm -hmm. often we're standing at the counter eating and I just, I I don't think that's a great way to approach your food that you're putting in your body to nourish. So I'm pulling out the cloth napkins and it's so nice and you just wash them, but it's just a really nice um, habit to be in. Um, Throw out some other ideas, maybe so people could maybe find one thing, maybe out of this podcast today, maybe you can just find one thing that you can implement into your life to be more sustainable. So let's hear a couple, Megan. What else do you have that would be good starter steps? What else do I have? The food thing, um, reusable bags um, Mm -hmm. for your groceries. Uh, If you have a lot of them, awesome. Store them in your car, in your house. Um, You know, not an abundance of them because again, back to that minimalist mindset, but 
Mm -hmm. Um, Getting yourself in the habit of making things convenient for you for when you're inconvenienced. Um, So that also goes along with like a coffee mug. If you're a coffee or a tea drinker and you like to stop at a coffee shop, um, Mm -hmm. grabbing something there. Uh, One of the big things um, for us that we do is we buy a lot of things in bulk at the grocery store. Um, So we have reusable containers. And the reusable containers that we use most of the time are old jars. So like spaghetti sauce jars or we buy a lot of spaghetti sauce. So (laughs) we have a lot of spaghetti sauce jars, but um, I'm sure there's other jars that people buy. Um, But using those jars to hold, whether it's nuts or seeds or oats or they sell bulk chocolate chips at our grocery store. Um, So I like eating chocolate chips (laughs) quite a lot. Um, (laughs) But, uh, but saving a jar and filling, filling that up. Um, Recycling. I I know that seems like, like a crazy one, but I'm going to say recycling, but recycling to what your city accepts. So Mm. there's this big misconception out there that, you know, anything that has that little three triangle, um, the three arrow triangle for recycling when it gets recycled. And that's not very true. Um, Every municipality has their own rules. So for example, in Fort Wayne, where I'm located, they only accept numbers one, two, and five. Um, There's definitely numbers three, four, and six, and seven, um, but those are not accepted. And so just even having a moment to be curious and say like, Hey, what is my city even recycling? Mm -hmm. That's sustainable. You're like putting a mindset towards something, having this passion for the earth and respecting, um, respecting your things, respecting the earth. Um, another thing is walking more walking or biking. If you can, um, again, if you live, you know, somewhere where you're not really able to bike or walk or use public transit, thinking about carpooling or really being more cognizant of, can I knock out a couple of different errands at one time so that I'm not doing so much driving here or there. Um, That's good. We we dropped down to one car and a motorcycle in my house. um, Let me guess, you ride the motorcycle with a baby? (laughs) I wish. (laughs) James wished I did, yeah, (laughs) with a baby, with a little sidecar. Um, (laughs) That would be so cool. But we, we have one car and, um, and a motorcycle, and uh, it was really challenging because we did a lot of carpooling on rainy days, but it allowed me the opportunity to spend more time with my husband, which, again, wasn't really convenient for me, like, zipping around to get from A to B as fast as possible, but from mm-hmm. a mental and just emotional perspective, it gave me that extra time to, like, hang out with someone I love and depending on how long your commute is, that can add up to be a lot of time over months and years. Um, so, yeah, I, I know those are just like a couple little things to think about. But I like um, that any little thing you do is sustainable for the environment, but also for your own health and energy. That's awesome. Oh, Megan, yeah. this has been such a good conversation. I feel like I want to have you back like 10 more times to just talk about all okay. these good things and That's ideas. I can talk to you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have one more question. Here we go. I want to know your favorite space in your home. My favorite space in my home is my bedroom. Ooh, you were the my... first person to say bedroom. Really? Yes. That's so, oh my gosh. Okay. Well, my favorite space is my bedroom. Um, We were insanely intentional about the paint color, which is just like a deep green. Green is my earth thing. Um, And it is super, super minimal. So um, we have our bed, which was made out of, we made it ourselves. Um, It's made out of barn wood that we used at our wedding. Um, people sat on it at our wedding. Um, so we have their butts with us forever, but (laughs) we, we, uh, we made the barn wood into our, into our bed. Um, we made it. It's so beautiful, Megan. Thank you. I love it. It's, it's like my favorite space. We have, uh, our side tables are made out of the same wood. 
and we have shelves for plants that are also made out of the same wood on our walls. Um, and, and that's it. And some blackout curtains. Um, but it's very simple. And for me, it's a sanctuary. So sleeping, um, especially now I don't get a lot of sleep with my baby. Um, but the sleep that I do get is important that it's like really nourishing and good. So yeah, my bedroom for sure. I love it. Oh my gosh, Megan, I can't thank you enough for taking time to talk to us today about this and take time away from your busy schedule and your baby and your family to talk to us. I truly appreciate it. And I hope you'll come back and talk more. I loved it. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes. All right, everyone. I hope you love this episode talking um, to Megan Masterson. I will have more information on her in the show notes. And that's that. I'll see you guys next time. I'd like to thank our production company, Garagio Media, the WELT 95.7 Studios, and our sponsor, Good Chi. For more information, follow the link in the show notes. Be sure to hit like, hit the subscribe button, and leave us a five-star review. If you want to connect, find us on Facebook, and be sure to let me know what topics you'd like to hear about. Thank you so much for listening. See you next time.